You're tuned in to Tackle Fanatics TV. And in this episode of TFTV, Alan Blair goes on another Urban Banks adventure to the Stratford Canal. I'm back on another urban adventure, but I wonder what this keys would have made of it. I am tribal. It's your boy News in the building. You know how we do. <laughs> I'm a man of my words. I read constant. Consonants and vowels, and verbs, no nonsense, just bomb-ish, what you know about Shakespeare, you more Mac D's drive through for shake, yeah, truth is, we just begun, I love all, trust you, do nothing wrong, with them, it's a comedy of errors, can't see the man in the mirror when you're living in terror, cause hell's empty, all the devils are here, have patience, it's a game of waiting, know what you're facing, with themes of racism and love, just jealousy, betrayal, wolves all looking to slay you, so you better beware, if you're looking like shit, that's why I listen to many to speak to few. Hope that their bar, yeah, speaks to you. They man, they lie, I speak the truth. You can take it as you like, I don't speak the fools. Just click and rewind this. Come, gentlemen, what you had is irrelevant. There's plenty more fish in the sea. It's what you do next that defines you. you, you. Today I'm down on the canal at Stratford-upon-Avon, the home of William Shakespeare. Sadly, I'm not here to visit him today, nor to look at any of his memorials, museums, etc. I'm here to go carp fishing. Very, very interesting. Never really know what you're going to catch. And uh, I'm in a lovely urban location. It's uh, certainly not grimy and grotty. It's, it's quite frankly quite beautiful. Um, starting off today in the marina, in, in this big basin. But I'm going to work my way up the canal, looking at various spots and basically trying to track the, track the fish down. It's no different to any session I go on. The first thing I'm doing is, is trying to find some fish. Uh, once I find them, I'm going to give them a little bit of bait, try and get them feeding and uh, hopefully try and nab one or two. Got some 
do live sort of local to the area and, and they've had some nice fish in the past. It's definitely carp in here. They've come from all over the place. Commons, mirrors, ghosties, coys, you just don't know. <laughs> Oh, well, actually, it, it transpires that the hour or two I'd like to have spent in the basin has been cut a bit short. Uh, we've just been informed that there's actually no fish in here. I suppose that's part and parcel of, uh, of this urban fishing. You know, you come to these locations. We had a real good look around the first thing to see if there was any signs, but there's absolutely nothing in the area to say no fish in. Anyway, we don't want to sort of mess people about. It's probably best we reel in, go and see if we can find some carp somewhere else. Pound a meal and large fries, please, mate. Carry the Yeah, please, fella. Cheers, boss. style of fishing you know the fact that I'm on a very very short day session it allows me to prepare a load of solid bags before I come and then as I move from spot to spot I can just loop another one in and cast it out to where I think the fish are. Real slow morning. Um, we've walked a lot of canal, and I've eventually found a couple of fish just here in this real narrow bit um, up against these rushes. Put a bit of bread in, a little bit of riser pellet, and uh, eventually I've nailed one on the bread frog. As you can see, that's just in the nick of time as a boat coming through there. Not a massive fish, but it's a, it's a real tidy little common. Um, and to be honest, uh, I'm made up. So first fish of the session, as I said it's not a monster but considering this morning I've only seen two fish it's a very 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 welcome result. So yeah it's always nice to, to get your first one from, from a new water and there it is a cracking little common, um, looking a little bit angry at the moment probably because I've just disturbed him from, from his milling about in the rushes, probably getting on for double figures, nailed on the bread bomb and I've still got five or six hours fishing left. Let's go and get that big one. Well, I've sat here for another 15 minutes or so, but I haven't seen any more fish. I've kept flicking the bread over the back. It's just not meant to be. I think the commotion of catching a fish in the boat going through, it's put a dampeners on getting any more activity here. 
I'm just going to quickly show you this bread bomb. It's a very, very simple method for fishing bread. Uh, bread, awesome bait, especially places like this, but one of the biggest issues is, is it falls off very easily. Uh, this simple device, uh, it's a silicon molded product. You just thread it onto your main line and then tie on a nice big hook. And I'm just going to tie that onto my, my main line using a blood knot. Uh, nothing complicated. In fact, it's, it's about as simple as it gets. Caught a lot of fish over the summer doing it. Bread, something that they love to eat. <clears throat> and uh, it's just made a little bit easier fishing it in this way. Over the eye of the hook, along the shank, like so. Very, very simple. I can now take a piece of bread. I'm just using sliced loaf. Get that inside there. Hook sits underneath, fish can't see a thing. That's out the last fish. Well, as we've walked up through town, we've stopped and looked at various spots. There's been some nice turning bays, plenty of boats, some wider areas, some narrow areas, and even some inflows where there's some water coming in. But to be honest, nothing's taken my fancy more than these snags. It is sort of early afternoon now. It's a very, very busy area. And I think those fish sort of push themselves right into the back where they're nice and safe. So I've got some bags here and I'm just gonna flip them nice and tight, right over there. Due to the fact that the water in, in canals are usually quite shallow and the boat's passing up and down all the time, if you are fishing across to the far bank, it's really important that you sort of not conceal your line, so to speak, but actually get it out of the way of the boats. The last thing you want to do is, is a boat pick up your line and, and wipe you out. Um, I'm just simply going to to add a back leg to my line. Um, canals are dug in such a way that there's a central track, the, the boat track, and this particular one, having to sort of feel around with the lead, it's probably about four foot deep. Uh, what I'm aiming to do is, I'm aiming to drop one of these back leads uh, on the far sort of drop off, uh, and then another one on my near drop off, basically pinning the line down uh, all the way across to where I'm fishing. By doing that, I should completely eliminate ever getting picked up by a boat. The whole setup's fished nice and tight. That means no slack lines. Due to the fact I've got those two back legs, I can really tighten that clutch up so I've got a nice bowstring line going all the way to where I'm fishing. The main reason I'm doing that is uh, due to the fact that I am fishing very, very tight to the snags. The last thing I want to do is give the fish any extra line to, to find the sanctuary of that. So fishing a nice tight line is going to keep me in direct contact with the fish when I do get a pick up. Also really important is my clutch. The last thing I want to do is, is fish with a really loose clutch that the fish can easily take line from. So if I tighten this line right back up, I'm really going to tighten my clutch up. So the line can be balled from it, but it, it's extremely difficult. I'm going to be sitting close by anyway, so really this, this sort of tip bending round or a, a couple of beeps on the siren, I'm going to be connected with the fish anyway. Five minutes, if that. Solid bag just flipped over there, it's gone. And uh, I've got a lovely little fully scaled. It's been one of them days, like it's, it's been a real short session. We started off in a marina, headed up here, set a really fancy for snags. And yeah, it just goes to show, um, 
to be honest, I, deep down I didn't think I'd get another take. I really didn't, but just goes to show you've got to be in it, in it to win it, you know. Decent rig, decent bait in the right place, and you can still get a bite. I'm gonna sort myself out, get a mat, and uh, get this little cracker out to show you. And there it is, second fish of, of my trip to Stratford Canal. I wonder what Shakespeare would make of that, a fully scaled. He's looking a bit tired, he's looking a bit battered. You know, they've spawned a few weeks ago, so there's a few wounds from that. But he's a proper little cart from a proper urban venue. Yeah, nailed it on a solid PVA bag uh, with a really large hook bait. Normally people sort of associate bag tactics with, with real small hook baits and I've gone completely the opposite. Nice big hook bait and that's really just to prevent me from getting picked up by any tench or bream. Uh, no nuisance fish today, just carp what we're after. Anyway, I'm gonna get this one slipped back but before I do, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of Medicarp and just help him along on his way. Like I said, there's a few sort of marks along here. Very, very simple to use guys and you know, it's helping the fish for the future especially gorgeous studies like this. The last thing you want to do is see all these sort of sore wounds. I'm just going to dry it off on the areas where it's red and sore. Leave it literally seconds and uh, that will solidify, creating a, a barrier uh, and the medicinal formula uh, within the, the product itself will start working underneath that sealed area. And hopefully in a few weeks time, it'll be nice and healed up. We'll just turn him around and do the other side. Yeah, he's got a couple more there. And that brings us to the end of another instalment of Urban Banks. Had a great day out with Vincent and Ollie today. You know, it was a short session, but still managed to catch a couple of fish. All in all, a right result. I'm gonna get this slip back, see you guys in a few weeks, where we're gonna be heading to Milton Keynes, where I came from, to show you what that has to offer. See you soon. You've been tuned into Tackle Fanatics TV and many thanks for watching. Tackle Fanatics are a full Nash stockist and offer their complete range at the best prices around. If you've seen a price somewhere better, call us on 0208 949 3307 and to view our range, log on to www.tacklefanatics.co.uk. Remember Tackle Fanatics also offer finance to make your tackle purchase more affordable. Tight lines from everybody at TFTV.